think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Jamaica, vacation paradise in the Caribbean. There are many exotic phenomena to be discovered on the island, either in the wild or on the roads. And whoever comes to Jamaica can hardly overlook these vehicles. These wooden vehicles are called push carts, and they can only be found here. They serve as a means of transport or mobile booths, and they are cobbled together from simple materials. And sometimes, they even become race carts. The people of Jamaica always make the best out of what is available. Take it easy. <laughs> Beyond the beaches, far from the tourist centers, the rural face of Jamaica rises up. In the highlands, encounters with push carts are rare. After all, it's not always going downhill. However, there are plenty of exotic animals and plants. A closer look reveals little gems of nature everywhere, like the doctor bird, the national bird of Jamaica. Grass-coated mountains and bamboo-covered valleys are pleasing for the eyes and senses. In the steep terrain, most merchandise is transported by lorries. This is not an ideal ground for muscle-driven vehicles, but it'll work for short distances. On the fertile soil in the mountains, vegetables and fruit grow abundantly. Even a small garden is often enough to make a living, especially when there's something left to be sold. Pushcarts play a major role for the farmers because the homemade construction of the vehicles doesn't cost much and so is simple and cheap for them to deliver fruit and vegetables to the closest greengrocer or market. Whether coconut, banana, pineapple, ackee, mango, avocado, or breadfruit. Almost all tropical fruits grow in Jamaica. They owe their abundant growth to the fertile soil, the tropical climate, and not least to the wealth of water on the island.
The bigger part of the subsoil consists of porous limestone that is dissolved in water and sedimented in glistening gradients. A process which results in elaborate limestone plateaus and waterfalls whose watercourses find their way bubbling and spluttering through the rainforest towards the sea. Rivers were often the only possibility to ship goods from the largely inaccessible plantations in the central areas to the densely populated coastlines. Bamboo rafts were the main vehicle of choice for this task. Built from strong trunks of dried bamboo, they can endure rough passages. They are robust and cost-efficient like pushcarts. Steering the raft through the rapids, although his daily routine, is a challenging job for the skipper. It needs his full concentration of balance and skill to navigate it just right. The working life of a raft is limited. It lasts for about half a year until it is rotten, then a new one will be built. Banana plantations and a cemetery indicate the vicinity of a settlement. The load is approaching its destination and the ride will soon be over. Rafting is hard work, but rarely fast paced, like many other things here on the island. After arrival at the jetty of the village in the coastal plain, the raft is unloaded. Banana, cherry. Of course, onto a pushcart. The transportation system around the big markets is ruled by pushcarts. For many, it is the only affordable means of transportation. Fresh fruit and vegetables are the main products and the basis for the tasty cuisine of Jamaica. The long aisles between the market stalls are the real domain of the pushcarts. And here is also their origin. At the end of last century, the markets grew ever bigger and the distances, therefore, longer. The idea of the steerable wooden barrow was born and began its triumphal course throughout Jamaica. They never ended developing and can now be found in a wide variety of forms. Outside the markets, pushcarts are also on vogue for delivery service. In this case, it's a consignment of building materials.
Bamboo is not only used for rafts, but for the construction of simple huts and racks as well. Roy Collins has lived here for many years. Like some Jamaicans, he is lucky to have a small piece of beach of his own, with a modest dwelling on it. Sometimes he needs to improve and extend his living space, building a roof for the kitchen, maybe some benches. And the construction material he has simply delivered by a pushcart hauler. If I need them to bring something, you know, I could ask them and they will come, you know. Even from Port Murray, if you go and get one, you can transport something. They said, oh, no problem, you know, as long as you can give them some money. <laughs> so it's not a problem. And it's more, it's not so expensive like the normal truck. Driving a push cart is not expensive, but it is strenuous. In Jamaica, people used to mostly hard work, you know. <laughs> they have to hard work for a little bit to eat, you know. We're used to this kind of life, so, you know, but if you don't work, you don't eat. So somewhere or the other, you have to work. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if it's hard or if it's easy. You have to work. At the end of the day, you have to eat. Operating a push cart is a modest means of making some money, like the fishery around Jamaica. But the struggle against the elements is a hard and dangerous way to make a living. Who owns a boat is often sharing it with others to reduce the fuel costs. Roy is well equipped. Everything that is needed for fishing is within reach just outside his residence on the north coast of Jamaica. He shares the boat with colleagues, and they were lucky today. The sea was calm and the catch successful. Bonitos, a species of tuna, are the most treasured fish. I'm a fisherman, I like the fishing, I like the water, I like the beach. So, you know, and then it's more a little bit more slow for me in Jamaica. I can take it more relaxed, it's not so fast, so, you know, and the life is a little bit more natural, you know. When you want to live like not so much stress and, you know, get away from most of the, the headache and things, then you, you try to live a more simple life, you know, <laughs> where you don't need so much expensive things and then, you know, sometimes you can't afford it. So what do you want to do? Live a simple life and you have less headache, you know. Kingston, the capital of Jamaica, is located on the southeast of the island. About one million people live in the metropolitan area. The city owes its existence to the enormous natural harbour. To live a simple life here is much more difficult than on the beach. Still, Kingston without pushcarts? It's hard to imagine. They are in use in every walk of life, standing up courageously to their motorised competitors. For many, it is the only possibility to survive. Downtown Kingston still holds many remnants of British colonialism that ended in 1962. But like the famous Ward Theatre, some historic buildings fall into ruins due to lack of funds. Well-kept statues, however, are abundant. Around William Grant Park, historic and contemporary national heroes watch over the traffic chaos. The greatest hero 
has its own place. Bob Marley, the king of reggae, a world esteemed Rastafarian idol, and certainly the most famous Jamaican. Kingston has an eventful past. More than 300 years ago, the harbour was already one of the most important in the Caribbean. The Harbour Bay is naturally protected from the worst impacts of tropical storms by a languette that also provides shelter for the local fishermen. Only a narrow channel offers an entrance to the protective area that all ships have to pass. The infamous pirate town of Port Royal once stood on the tip of the peninsula well known as the most lawless city in the Caribbean from where the buccaneers sailed off on their raids in the 17th century. Until most of the city sank below sea level during an earthquake in 1692, causing the death of around 2,000 people. Since then, Port Royal is only a small fishing village at the entrance of the Harbour Bay. Kingston was founded by the fugitives and survivors of the desecrated Port Royal and grew quickly into the biggest town of Jamaica. The harbour is to date one of the largest in the Caribbean, mooring area for thousands of ocean liners every year. And sometimes the domain of one or the other optimistic angler. Whether tanker, reefer or container ship, they all seek daily the shelter of this secure port. Kingstown is, um, it's wild people, especially if you go there like you have a little bit of value, like you have a gold chain or yeah, people will just see you and try to, to get it, you know. I grow with my grandmother and my aunties and my cousin and my... Never have a brother. I have one brother, he died. He died when about 30 years ago now. He died in Kingstown where there's, um, you know, this gang war and he want to he wanna get away and then they kill him, cut his neck and burn him and... Terrible thing, you know. Because where my mother lived in, in, um, in the city, in the ghetto, very terrible place. Two sides of the same coin. The magnificent colours of nightfall in the Caribbean versus a brutal reality of violence and crime. It's no wonder, with an unemployment rate above 35% among the youth, and still people come into town driven by the hope of finding their fortune here. Coronation Market is the biggest market in Jamaica. An industrious flow of coming and going, selling and buying, vendors touting their goods and shoppers chasing bargains create an unmistakable soundscape and an atmosphere of permanent hustle and bustle. This is where the pushcart drivers find most of their work. The affectionately constructed kitchen pushcarts are operating alongside the prevalent transport vehicles and follow them through the aisles all over the market. Where people work hard, nutritious food is in demand.
The kitchen cart operators are the first to arrive in the morning and the last to leave the market at closing time. The transport push carts are often operated by teams. Depending on the workload, the drivers alternate. Pushing and steering the heavy vehicle demands a lot of strength. It becomes easier in two-man teams and it is much more fun. The transport routes between the market stalls are the expressways for the pushcarts. And while some take a break to refine their skills in Jamaica's national game, for others, the daily routine continues. As a rule, push carts are simple, steerable wheel barrows built from timber, although some are more elaborately constructed. This here testifies to a glorious past as a race cart. It's a status symbol because its owner is one of the champions of the famous Jamaican pushcart derbies that once took place in Kingston. I love the pushcart race, you know. It is very attractive, you know. Yeah, when it was going on, I was love it, you know. I would like it to start back again. After some accidents, authorities banned the races in Kingston, much to the driver's regret. Yeah, man, I like it to come back, man. I love it, you know. I love to race. Yeah, man. These races did not only attract a large number of spectators, they were also popular with the drivers because the first three to finish were rewarded with considerable bonuses. Therewith, dreams could come true dreams that are out of reach for the drivers in their normal daily life. It's leisure time now for the rest of the evening after a long day's work that started at five o'clock in the morning. The push carts stay in the market, chained. It's the right time to have a drink in a local bar. Why would I? That would be their party for the open night. So why would I come this? They pour mainly rum here, the Jamaican national drink. What follows is a ritual celebrated all over the world, the after work small talk. Topics of conversation are much the same weather, the latest price hikes, the increasing traffic, the quality of beer and rum, and of course, women. Rum is made from sugar cane, which is cultivated large-scale in Jamaica. Actually, the gigantic plantation's main purpose is the manufacture of sugar, one of the main exports of the island. But of course, better known on an international level and certainly more popular, is the Jamaica rum. The juice extracted from sugar cane is fermented and eventually distilled. The recipes are top secret and diligently guarded. After the distillation process, the rum has to ripen in wooden barrels. It takes up to 15 years for quality rum to get its typical flavour. Mm -hmm. 
an old sugarcane mill from the late 19th century, is kept in operation for demonstration purposes. In past times, the producers used water power for bigger quantities of sugarcane. The relics of a 400-year-old water wheel and the ruins of a sugarcane mill originate from the Spanish era. The settlers of Sevilla de la Nueva produced sugar for export to Europe. Only ruins are left of the colonist constructions who arrived with the royal conquistadors to claim the island on behalf of the Spanish crown. The British expelled the Spaniards when they occupied Jamaica in 1655. Their architectural imprints are all over the island. One of the most impressive is Colbeck Castle, which serves as a fortress against possible Spanish retaliation. Built in the style of an Italian mansion, it was named after Colonel Colbeck, a soldier of the invading English troops who ruled his plantations from this extravagant residence. Nowadays, the walls, built from limestone and red brick, house only wild bees and lizards. Located in the heartland, 80 kilometers from Kingston is made Penn, its geographical position is almost in the centre of the island. Founded as a plantation settlement by the British in 1660, it now has 60,000 inhabitants and is the capital and the largest town in the parish of Clarendon. The town's centre is very busy during the daily business hours and in between claiming their indispensable role as suppliers, pushcarts. Mostly in modified forms in order to serve the purpose, be it transporter, deliverer or kiosk. The large open-air market is not only the trading centre for products from the surrounding villages, but according to public legend, it is also the birthplace of the pushcarts. And therefore, it is only natural that the Maypen pushcart derby takes place here. Everybody in town takes the upcoming event very seriously. Above all, the representatives of the local authorities. My name is Sergeant Richards. With me, we have Corporal Pell and Constable Marshall, and we are from the Maypen Police Station. Police officers from the Parish Traffic Department introduce the appropriate safety precautions. The drivers participating in the race discuss the rules and regulations, and at the end of the meeting, agree to the most important principles safety and fairness first. And for those without wheels, the pushcart depot offers a vehicle to anybody willing to race, as long as they can prove their driving skills. But before the preparations for the race on Sunday can begin, business has to be arranged, because the drivers need money to upgrade their vehicles.
Even though the market is busy, it is not easy for the pushcart drivers to find enough loads to earn a living, let alone preparing the carts for the derby. On the fringes of the market, the pushcarts get their race appearance, starting with its makeup. The body will be carefully reconditioned. Sponsors provide the paint, green, yellow and black, the beloved colours of the national flag. Volunteers and helpers attend to the artistic design of the vehicle. But where technique is concerned, the driver takes care of that himself. The lower end of the steering rod is connected to the controllable front axle through a rope. A simple mechanism and easy to repair, or in this case, to renew. Rivals and fans watch the installation. With everything accurately installed and the wheels and steering rod functioning properly, the race should run well for the driver. After all, as last year's winner, he is the favourite. <laughs> Nevertheless, suddenly everybody is an expert and the well-meant advice erupting from all sides is not always welcomed by the champion. He knows exactly what it needs to come in first over the white line. And so far, he is not yet happy with the results of his tuning. But there is still time to straighten things out. In the neighbourhood, people are playing domino, the national game of Jamaica. It's mostly played for drinks or little money, but during the nationwide championships, the stakes rise. This particular form of domino is called cutthroat, but its bloodthirsty name mocks its true character. It just means all against each other. Others enjoy the late afternoon with music and dance. In remembrance of their African ancestry, some of the traditional songs are still performed in their original African languages. As the sunset draws near, the sounds of the urban settlement slowly quieten down. The seemingly endless mountains are scarcely populated.
Bridges are spanning the clear rivers, allowing access to hidden plantations and hamlets in the bush. An exciting multitude of tropical fruits grows here in the wild, ready to be harvested. Some are eaten fresh, like orange, mango, coconut or avocado. Others need to be roasted, like breadfruit, or cooked, like aki. They are all an important nutritional source for humans and animals. Not everybody has the means to transport his produce to the municipal markets. Sales stalls on the thoroughfares in the countryside offer a big variety of fruit and vegetables at reasonable prices directly from field and garden. Especially popular with Jamaicans is Aki. Aki, it mostly grow wild. So you can always go and get haki every place and you know some people sell it but usually you can go and look it for yourself. It's a good meal and it's very cheap. Most people can afford you to get some haki with a little piece of salt fish and you can the whole family enjoy it, you know. Now people don't have so much money where they can buy a lot of other stuff so they can buy it. You can get some haki when the haki time people use it up, you know. Aki is actually poisonous and should not be plucked from the tree when the fruits are still closed. They are only ready for consumption when they are burst open. First, the pulp has to be carefully cut from the peel and the inedible pits have to be removed. The consistence of the pulp is still more reminiscent of rubber and therefore now has to cook for at least half an hour. In the meantime, the other ingredients for this traditional Jamaican meal are prepared. Onions, sweet pepper, garlic and tomatoes. After the vegetable spice mix has been sautéed in vegetable oil, the drained aki can be added. Now, just mildly sizzling for a while, and then the traditional aki dish is ready to be served. It's Sunday. Roy has cooked enough to serve all his friends. The meal will not be taken on a table in the sun. That's for visitors. They eat where they feel comfortable, in the shade. The taste of Aki is a bit like spicy scrambled eggs. It's a healthy meal because it's high in plant fat and rich in protein. Cleaning the dishes in the sea saves precious drinking water and is ecological. No detergents are needed. Sand makes for cleanliness and the remaining crumbs feed the small fish in the shallow water. A majority of Jamaicans go to church on Sundays. Two thirds of the population belong to a Protestant congregation and most of their churches feature Anglican architecture. 
only a few fishermen set out on a Sunday. Frigate birds, however, need to find fish every day of the week. And sometimes, this is at the beach. The wide-winged birds that spend most of their life airborne often follow the fishermen to the shore and wait for leftovers. As soon as the fish are gutted, they are on the spot and take their share of the catch. Today, there is not much on offer. Most of the boats stayed high and dry. Relaxing, going to the church and an afternoon at the beach. Sunday is reserved for sweet idleness. Not so in May Penn. It's only a few hours till the start of the derby. At the finish area, last preparations and test drives take place. Others get ready at the start. Fine tuning of the wheels is important for proper and smooth functioning. Push carts are sturdy and actually designed for heavy duty. But today, it does not matter how heavy a load it can transport, but rather how fast it is. Motivation is high and some of the younger ones are already showing off their skills. More drivers arrive at the start and park their vehicles here. There will be three races, the juniors, the semi-professionals and the best of the best. A last test run on the one mile long racetrack. The sandbag's weight on the loading bed provides stability and road grip. Now, the drivers congregate at the finishing area. And finally, at noon, everybody heads for the start. Here, everything is geared up for the beginning of the races. The junior drivers are called up. The police have blocked the road and the course route is filling up with spectators. Check, check, check. Slap. One, two, three. Right here inside of the Rhythm Pushcart Perfect. the tension rises. Run it to the finish line. Walk down the finish line. I'm going to. 
and they're off. It's not easy to keep the vehicles on track at this speed. Push guards are not made for high speed. And on uphill sections, the driver's physical strength is sorely challenged. After four minutes of top performance, the first race of the derby has its winner. Line up for the second race. Start of the Sebi Professionals. Uphill, the right pushing technique is key to accelerate the cart. Downhill, the wheel construction counts. undisputed winner of race number two. But now, the main race. the masterclass rolls into position for the race of the best. Once more, stamina, strength and pushing technique will decide who comes out on top. Or is it rather the design of the wheels and axles? Whatever the secret is, the champ repeats his victory. Poised and undisputed in compelling style and cheered by an enthusiastic crowd. He revels in his celebrations and enlightens the spectators about his victorious race tactic. It's over, and high tension turns into relaxation. Jamaicans love fast races. After all, it is not only the homeland of pushcart derbies and Olympic bobsledders, but also of the world's fastest sprinters. In everyday life, however, people prefer to take it easy. Slowing down, or deceleration as it's called in the Western industrial countries, is here a long exercised lifestyle. Even though life does not provide riches for the majority in Jamaica, people try to maintain their vitality and serenity. You know, I live like a cowboy on the beach. <laughs> I don't eat so much. <laughs> when you're not really sick and you have freedom and you know you're not in, <laughs> in jail, you're free, you're free by the movement, then life is okay. You know, when you get up and you can see the sunshine and everything is okay. That is very important, you know. They are on. So you can enjoy life. Take it easy. <laughs> 
try to take it easy because it's not so, it's not so easy to take it easy. <laughs> you know? So you have to just try to take it easy, you know?